What's going on guys? All right, so today's a bittersweet day. Uh, we're selling the 400. A new owner is coming to pick her up this evening. I went ahead and I removed the decals. I kept them just in case, maybe down the line, if I end up picking up another dedicated track bike, I can reuse those graphics. Uh, the new owner kind of wanted the bike in all white, which I don't blame him. The bike does look great in white. As you can see, we got the 10R in the garage and just don't have the space for two bikes as it is. It's been an awesome bike. There's absolutely nothing wrong with her. And everything I said about the 400, how it's a great beginner bike, great intermediate bike, just an all around great bike for anyone who wants to get out and ride. I still stick by it. That's so, so easy. Yeah. So easy. <laughs> you can find these at Cycle Gear for like 20 bucks. So, yeah. All right, guys, that's it. She is sold. There goes the 400. All right, so now that the 400 is gone, today we're gonna install the Fender Eliminator kit and remove this dolphin tail thing here. This is just a generic kit on Amazon. I think it was $40. I will include it in uh, the, the video description, but basically most Kawasaki's have similar cutouts. You're gonna wanna remove uh, this panel over here to get access to the wire bundle so you can disconnect the tail lights and the license plate light. And the seat on these ZX-10Rs are pretty complicated to remove, but I'll show you, it's kind of funky. So basically this plastic piece comes up. It's pushed in by two pins here that go into kind of rubber grommets. And there's a metal steel plate here. Basically what you want to do is you want to slide, slide to the left and then down. Pull it out. Okay. Okay, so that came out. You just push the center of that head and then the whole thing kind of pops out. And with that plastic push pin out, I believe you can just pull on this and looks like we're getting some good separation here. So with this stuff pretty loose, now you have access to this wire bundle here. All right, so we're switching to the under tail of the bike here. Uh, I forgot to mention the above Allen screws, we, rem we removed those hex screws. Those were four millimeters and I believe these down here are gonna be five. It might be on pretty tight. <laughs> You'll have four of these large five millimeter bolts, hex bolts with a washer, and that's all it ne that's all you need to remove the fender. What we'll do is uh, we'll find the connectors for the blinkers, and disconnect them, and then we'll just pull this whole fender off. Blue connects into blue, white connects into white. There were two black connectors. It's a tight space, so be patient. Got all those disconnected. Okay, so for the fender, you'll see this hole here. That's three wires that run up inside here into that uh, connector loom of wires that we just disconnected. These are the heads, and there's a very tight crack or tight opening to pull these out. So a little tip, grab the actual wire on the other side of where it's coming out through the fender, and then just tug on it, and that's it. That's all there is to it. So we got the full fender out, and then the three connector heads out. So the blue black and white. So there's two black connectors on there. One goes to the tail light, but... And if you've ever had a Kawasaki before, um, they're all pretty standard as far as how the wires run. We'll remove all the wires so that way we can connect them in the new housing. We'll pull all these wires out. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a smaller socket and a seven millimeter head, and that will fit most hex bits. And this should be, this angle will be a lot better. And there's less risk of me stripping the screw head. Once you break it loose, you should be able to use your fingers and just spin it out for the most part. So, okay, so screws out. Now we can remove this backing steel plate. There we go. So, plate will come out like that. All the wires are free to roam. I think we just pull this Oh, there we go. So just give it a good tug. Whole thing comes out. You can see it's similar shape to what we saw on my new fender eliminator. All right, so license plate light, just a couple Phillips heads. 
All right, so with those two Phillip heads out, this license plate light can just come out. And there's looks like there's two rubber um, rubberized, I don't know, grommets, whatever you call them. I'm assuming we're gonna pull these out to fit onto the new fender. This way everything stays nice, tight, and sealed. These just come out, just gotta give them a good pull, and they're out. All right, so this is the new kit. Uh, we'll work backwards. So we Okay, if they're fighting you, just kind of use a screwdriver, a flathead or something to push it through. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and reassemble the license plate light. Holes here, those are the plastic sleeves that the two Phillip heads will screw back into. Run your wire through the center. It's good. License plate light will face down, obviously. Yeah, nice tight seal. Okay, so that's nice and snug. License plate light looks good. So this assembly is, is going to connect into here. It almost looks like I may have to break off these brackets here, which I may have to do. But maybe if you just grab some pliers and then kind of work it back and forth, the tabs will just break off. There you go. We'll just work these back and forth. Tabs will come out. Ta-da! So we'll just run the wiring, the head of the connector through the opening, which now it can fit. All right, so we got the tail lights um, mounted in those housing. Kind of had to use a screwdriver and kind of mangle up the sides of the grommet a little bit to, just to get it to squeeze in. Just get it to push in there. Also, let's see, there was a metal plate that went on top of that. Okay, got that screwed in and snugged. Okay, and honestly, you can just use a, your hand to thread these in. You don't need to go crazy tight, otherwise you risk um, these plates coming off. But that's good, snug. And we have all the wires fished through. Uh, what we're gonna do before we run this up through the hole in the bike, I have these sitting in the garage, just a bunch of uh, rubber grommets, a uh, bunch of different sizes. I'm gonna use a one inch. And basically what this is gonna do is take it to the bike, but here's where uh, the fender is gonna mount up to, these four bolts. And then there's this hole here that you fish the wires through. And the tire, you know, I live in Seattle, so we get, we get a lot of rain. So just to prevent any type of gunk or debris flying up into this little hole, I'm gonna use this little one inch grommet here. The largest one's gonna be this one. Yep. Get into the home stretch, we'll just run, plug these cables back in. You know, rather than trying to struggle and run it back under the metal frame, I may just find a little nook up on top and maybe tape it, zip tie it so it's out of the way. Getting these these uh, connector heads underneath the uh, underneath the frame in between the plastic is gonna be a little tough. Okay, black goes into black. That one inch grommet worked really well. So all we have to do is just uh, bolt up, use those four bolts to bolt this up, and then we're good to go. All right, so we have our original five millimeter bolts, hex bolts here. Just to be safe, I'm gonna use some blue Loctite. But it goes a long way. It's all you need, really. You know, I should have mentioned it might be a good idea to check that your lights are operational before you start tightening. All right, so we got everything mounted up. Just have to put on the rear seat. Man, I absolutely love this color in the garage. Whenever there's no direct sunlight hitting it, it just looks amazing. It looks awesome in the sun too, but this is something else. Anyways, so got the Fender Eliminator kit all installed. It's all tidied up in the back. You can see it's much cleaner. Adjust the lighting so you guys can get a better shot. So it's much cleaner, a lot less happening back there, just simple. Uh, no dolphin tail, these integrated nicely. Give you guys a shot of all angles. Give you guys a side shot, how she looks. We also got these tank grips installed. Uh, these are from Stomp Grip. I was gonna go with Tech Spec just because they were amazing on my 400, but um, they only have the black and I wanted clear. Didn't wanna mess with the KRT edition uh, graphics. So went with the clear. You can still see all the graphics, still see that 10 over there. 
And yeah, and also, as I was filming this, UPS just dropped off my new windscreen uh, from Puig, Puig, however you pronounce it. So we're gonna install the new Puig windscreen, which is a light smoke, and it's gonna be about two inches higher, give us a little bit more wind protection on the highway. All right, so this is light smoke. I'm actually really happy I went with light smoke. So here's clear, and then smoke. Uh, side by side, let's see. You can see the Puig has a slightly higher rise. So install on this could not be easier. It's just four millimeter, six four millimeter hex bolts, and they come right out. Being mindful, there's a little plastic washer on each bolt. All right, so that just came right out. After we remove it, the stock windscreen has uh, four of these rubber sleeves here that the windscreen bolts will uh, screw into. So we'll want to take these off and put them onto the new windscreen. Okay, so it just takes a little convincing, but start from the bottom and squeeze it up towards away from the bike. So from underneath and up, and then they'll pop right in place. And that's it. We got the new windscreen, the light smoke. You can see it's still highly visible. We'll give you a shot of the side. Oh, that looks so awesome. Really happy with how that turned out. Again, this is the Puig Z windscreen for the 21 and up ZX-10R.